Hello everyone and welcome to Dr. Dax, where I give you my favorite tips and tricks on how to prevent and get out of pain so that you can live a happy, healthy, and active lifestyle. Today we're going to be talking about balance and avoiding falls. Now I know that this might be a video for grandma, but share it with her. You're going to help her more than you know. To give you an idea of how serious this is, I'd like to show you some pretty scary statistics from the CDC about falls. Alrighty, well I'll let you guys kind of look these over yourselves, but I'll just try to summarize a little bit for you. The first four bullet points really show how many people are injured severely due to falls. Over 800,000 patients a year are hospitalized because of a fall injury, so this is no joke. Going down two more bullet points, falls are the most common cause of traumatic brain injuries. And this last one definitely hurts the pocket. In 2015, the total medical cost of falls totaled more than $50 billion. Holy cow. All right, and this last one here is the scariest in my mind. If rates continue to rise like they have over the last several years, we can anticipate seven fall deaths every hour by 2030. So as you can see, this is really no joke. So anything we can do to help somebody prevent a fall will help them potentially avoid serious injury and high medical costs, and in the worst case scenario, even death. So today I'd like to teach you about all the mechanisms that your body uses in order to avoid falls. We'll talk about how to train your balance and then how to do it safely so that you can avoid all of those terrible CDC statistics. Let's get started. So how does your body avoid falling? Mechanism number one actually starts at your ankles. If I lose my balance backwards, my natural reaction will be to raise my toes up like this. If I start to fall forwards, I will come up onto my toes. If you try this yourself, you should be able to feel this happen. Now, if your ankles aren't enough to help prevent the fall, then you're gonna move into your hips. If I start falling backwards, I'm gonna stick my hips forward like this. If I start falling forwards, I stick my butt out like this. Finally, the last mechanism is to actually take a step. Here's a nice little slow-mo of up onto the toes, then the hips, and finally a step. When training to avoid falls, there are two aspects that we should pay attention to. The first one is your balance, that sort of internal wobble or sense of stability that we have. And the second one is your strength, which is particularly important in that last mechanism to be able to take a quick and powerful step. Hey, Dax from the future here, realizing that Dax from the past was a dum-dum and forgot to hit the record button on the camera. So while I tell you what I was going to say here, here's a picture of my dog when she's a puppy as an apology. What I was going to say is that we should take a look now at training the balance system. This is the harder one of the two to do safely, but I have a perfect solution that works worth everybody, and that's to use a corner of your room. When you use a corner when training balance, you actually have a perfect safeguard to each of your sides as well as backwards. Now, if you do feel like you need something in front of you as well, use a chair. The chair works really nicely here just to give you an extra added measure of stability in front of you. If you start to lose your balance, you can just quickly grab onto it. Just make sure that you use a sturdy chair. The exercises in the corner here come in four levels of difficulty. The first and the easiest is feet together or as close as you can get them with your eyes open. The second is tandem stance, or one foot in front of the other with your eyes open. Third is feet together with your eyes closed. And fourth is tandem stance with eyes closed. Most of the patients that I work with typically work in the second and in the third level. Now, if you have to start at level one, that is perfectly fine. There are plenty of people that need to do that. Whichever level that you start at, simply start there and then have a goal to get to the next level, and then you try to get to the next level. Now, once you get to level four and you're doing that with ease, then you're good. This is probably no longer a concern for you, and I would continue to train at level four in order to maintain your good balance. Now, when training any one of these levels, I like to start with three to four sets of 30 to 60 seconds at a time. Once you get done with that, you might challenge yourself and attempt the next level to see if you're ready for it. But Dax, how do I know which level to start in? 
How do I know if I can progress? I'm glad you asked. In order to answer that, let's talk a little bit more about that wobble feeling we talked about earlier of losing your balance. Now this feeling really scares a lot of people, but it is actually exactly what you need. If I do a balance exercise and I don't feel any wobble, that's very similar to lifting a very, very light weight. It's really not gonna do me very much good. Conversely, if you are so wobbly that you have to touch the wall or the chair every three to five seconds, then this is probably too hard for you. You could compare this to trying to lift a really heavy weight that you just can't lift. It's just not gonna be quite as good for you. If I can do one of these levels for 30 seconds with minimal wobble, then the exercise is too easy. You need to increase and go to the next level. If I get to that next level and I need to touch every 10 to 20 seconds in order to maintain my balance, that is perfect. We are in a fantastic training zone. If that drops down to three to five seconds, I'm now at a too difficult level and I need to consider going down a level. Okay, now let's take a look at a couple of strengthening exercises. The first exercise is the sit to stand exercise. This exercise strengthens your butt and your legs, which are both vital parts of being able to catch yourself with that big powerful step so that you don't fall. The second exercise is standing hip abduction. This exercise works the muscles on the sides of your hips that help you with side to side stability as well as, once again, a quick, powerful step to save yourself from a fall, but this time to the side. The last exercise is toe raises. This one is particularly important to avoid that shuffle gait and pick up the toes off of the floor when walking so that you don't accidentally catch your toe on sometimes just the floor, but it can also be a transition between hard floor and carpet. Now, obviously, this is not a comprehensive list of exercises. There are many more out there that you can do. If you feel like you need more exercises, then please consider seeing your physical therapist. There's a lot more that they can do to give you a specific plan that meets your specific needs. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it with someone you know. You could help them get rid of their cane or walker. You could prevent a serious injury or even save a life.